Great Reset. United Nations joins World Economic Forum to ban oil, gas, and coal use. Do we have enough energy sources to replace all this? That's the question. UN Chief Antonio Guterres on Wednesday vowed to ban all oil, gas, and coal use on a global scale as part of a self-described global climate Marshall Plan. The Portuguese uh, socialist talk, uh, spoke ahead of the upcoming World Economic Forum, WEF annual meeting in Davos, Switzerland, which has also called for a ban on all carbon emissions. To avoid a climate emergency, humanity must end fossil fuel pollution and accelerate the renew renewable energy transition before we incinerate our only home, Kudera said. According to reports, this is what he said. He says renewable technology should be treated as freely available global public goods unconstrained by intellectual property. In other words, if one, someone files a uh, patent on it, he doesn't have the right to uh, uh, use it solely for himself. The UN Secretary General also called for an end uh, to approximately half a trillion dollars in fossil fuel subsidies, roughly two thirds of which go to consumers and the rest directly to industry as part of the drive to change consumer habits. He says, every minute of every day, coal, oil, and gas receive roughly $11 million in subsidies, Guterres said, while people suffer from high prices at the pump. The oil and gas industry is raking in billions from a distorted market. This scandal must stop, he said. For its part, the WF published a 10-point plan to providing, provided by the International Energy um, Agency, the IEA, as a way to end oil dependence as part of its self-declared Great Reset. It's just one further step in addressing what the WEF already has taken to calling an existential threat to the planet. The plan includes everything from car-free Sundays to avoiding air travel, and its advice to seeing, as seen below. One, reduce speed limits on highways by at least 10 kilometers an hour. Many countries already use temporary speed limit reductions on highways, mostly to reduce congestion and or air pollution and to improve road safety. To work home, work from home up to three days a week where possible. Around a third of the jobs in advanced economies can be done from home, opening up the possibility of reducing oil demand while maintaining productivity. Three, car-free Sundays in cities. Car-free Sundays were introduced in countries such as Switzerland, Netherlands, and West Germany, during the 1973 oil crisis, cities in the other countries have used them more recently to promote public health. Four, reduce public transport prices and incentivize walking and cycling. Investment in uh, public transport and infrastructure to support walking and cycling has been boosted by substantial economic recovery packages introduced in response to COVID-19 crisis. Five, alternate private car access to roads in large cities. Restricting private cars' use of roads in large cities on alternate weekdays is a measure with a long track record of successful implementation around the world. Six, increase car sharing and adopt practices to reduce fuel use. Governments can provide additional incentives by designating dedicated traffic lanes and parking spots next to public transport hubs and by reducing road tolls on higher occupancy vehicles. Such measures are enforced in suburban areas of cities like Madrid and Houston, among others. Seven, promote efficient driving for freight trucks and good deliveries. Government can introduce so-called eco-driving techniques as part of the tuition and examination process required to receive a driving license and advanced driving certificates as has been done in France and other countries. Eight, use trains instead of planes where possible. High-speed rail can substantially replace short-haul air travel on routes that offer affordable, reliable, and convenient rail journeys. Nine, avoid business air travel where alternative options exist. Although not all business travel, travel by plane can be avoided, in many cases the use of virtual meetings can be an effective substitute. A reduction of around two out of every five flights taken for business purposes is feasible in the short term based on the changes within the uh, pandemic, witnessing the pandemic. 10. Increased adoption of electric and other more efficient vehicles. By the end of 2021, 
8.4 million electric cars were on the roads in advanced economies, building on record sales in Europe in particular. Demand for electric cars continues to be strong on the back of plummeting costs of batteries in recent years and government support. Already in the US, many of the measures have started to be implemented. As reported on Monday, US Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg delivered a plan for billions of dollars to be made available under his department's new Safe Streets and Roads for All program to cities to get, that get people to ditch their motor vehicles for alternative forms of transport forever. The Biden administration is steering $5 billion in federal aid to localities carving out bike paths and wider sidewalks while pushing commuters into public transport and cycling as an alternative to driving. Buttigieg's aim will be to provide a direct infusion of federal cash to communities that pledge to promote multiple users of a roadway, particularly pedestrian and bicyclists. The argument is too many people are dying in motor accidents for that method of transport to be sustainable, so people must get out of their cars and be rewarded with taxpayer cash. This is by Sean Lattle to Tobiah News Punch. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.